Hey guys, in this video, you're gonna learn two simple tricks for balancing the low end content of your mix, be it a kick drum and a bass guitar or a bass synth, and get them sounding full so that that low end translates into different listening scenarios. Let's get to it. Learn audio engineering. Learn audio now. Sound strategies to sound goals. So this first trick comes from Jakir King. You may have heard of it, you may have not, but he prefers to start his mixes by balancing the low end content and then build the mix around that. So the first thing we're gonna do is pull up a VU meter on our master output and we're gonna use it to calibrate the balance between our two bass instruments. So any kind of VU meter is gonna work. If you have a plug-in with a VU meter or if you wanna use this one, this one is by TB Pro Audio. It is free and I will link it in the description. So a VU meter is a little bit different than the peak meters in your DAW. All of our peak meters go to zero, but zero on a VU meter is actually minus 18 full dB full scale. Zero dB VU equals minus 18 dB FS. So when we're at the zero point, we're not gonna be clipping. Just to clear that up, we're gonna have plenty of headroom going forward. So the first step is to solo the kick drum. And I've actually got three kicks. I've got a kick in, a kick out, and then a kick sample. And what I'm gonna do is I wanna calibrate them so that we're reaching around minus three on the VU meter. So let's have a listen to this. Okay, so we can use the, the gain in the plugin itself to just change it around so we're not actually affecting the balance of our mix, we're just doing it within this simple VU plugin. So now, step two is to add in the bass. So I've got a bass DI here, and I'm going to blend it in, and I want the bass guitar, when the kick hits, to be reading zero. So when both of these bass instruments happen together, they're going to be at zero dB VU. Awesome, that sounds great. So why do we wanna do that? What's happening here? Well, a doubling of sound intensity or power will result in an increase of three decibels. So by setting the kick at minus three, and then by bringing in the bass so that when both hit together, they're hitting zero dB, we've balanced the intensity relationship between these two instruments so that they're playing back at approximately the same volume. So let's have a listen to this in with the mix. Awesome, so depending on the room that we're mixing in, we can't always trust that everything that we hear is gonna translate into the outside world. So this is a neat, useful little trick for calibrating the balance relationship between two instruments that you want to be playing around the same volume. So let's try it with the kick and the snare. I've got a VU meter on my kick bus, I've got a VU meter on my snare bus, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna see what the relationship between them is. I like to tuck the snare a little bit behind the kick because uh, I find otherwise I, I miss that low end if the snare is too loud. Um, but you can do whatever feels right. Let's see what's going on here. Cool, so as you can see, they're both kind of peaking around minus one, minus two, uh, and I just back down the snare bus just a little bit so that the kick plays out a little bit more than the snare. But you can do whatever feels right for your mix. Okay, so now let's take a deeper look at the bass guitar. So 
Just like we did the different kick mics to accent different frequencies within the instrument, we can dedicate tracks to different areas of the bass guitar. However, when I recorded this, I only used a DI on the bass, uh, so I've duplicated that track, and I'm going to use the first one here for all of the low end. So I've got an EQ, and I've, I've scooped out all of the highs, I've added a little bit of bottom boost, and I've also um, used some compressors um, to compress it so that it's more steady. And then for the second one, I've got that for all of the top and for all the mid-range, uh, and we're gonna add some saturation and some character to that. So for that, I'm using the Sans Amp, which is a stock plugin with Pro Tools. It is fantastic. You can play with the buzz, the punch, the crunch, and the drive to find what kind of character, what frequency range you want to accent. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn down our bass guitar that I'm using for the top end, sort of like an amp simulation, and I'm going to blend that in. And what this is gonna allow you to do is to control how much grit and amp tone you want without affecting all of the low end that we've carefully balanced with the kick drum. So I'm gonna bring that in slowly with the fader. Okay, cool, it sounds good there. So then what I've done is summed both versions to a bus, and I've put on a multi-band compressor, the Wave C4. For this one, I've just got two bands, one for the low end and one for all of the mids and the top end, which is just helping glue everything together. So let's have one more listen with and without this multi-band compressor. Awesome, so just evening it out, gluing it together, making it sound like it's one cohesive unit. So I hope this video helped you out. Leave a like if it did, and please consider subscribing and turning on notifications for fresh weekly content. It really helps me out when you do that. As always, thank you so much for watching this video, and I will see you in the next one.